Let's take a look at how we can create a nice graph of the function y equals x cubed minus 18x squared plus 32 on a TI-83 graphing calculator. A good place to start when you want to graph something on a graphing calculator is with the standard window, option 6, in the zoom menu. And if I choose that option, it sets up the windows so that the x values go from negative 10 to 10 and the y values also go from negative 10 to 10. And for many functions that's a pretty good window to use. For this function, however, that, that doesn't work very well. And so from calculus we can see some important points that I'd like to include on the graph. From the first derivative we get critical values of 0 and 12 and at 0 we have a local maximum and at 12 we have a local minimum and from the second derivative there's an inflection point at 6 so I can go to the table and confirm that at 0 the y value is 32 at 12 the y value is negative 832 and at 6 the y value is negative 400 um, if, if you weren't planning to use calculus or if, or if you don't know much about calculus yet, uh, you can still use the table to find important x and y value pairs that you'd like to see on the graph. So what this tells me is that I'd like my x value range to at least include the numbers from 0 to 12, and I'd like my y value range to include everything from negative 832 up to positive 32. So thinking about what that will do to the graph, I want to see more y values, I also want to see more x values. The window controls the settings of the window um, and we can see those standard settings. Negative 10 to 10 are the minimum and maximum for x and negative 10 to 10 are also the minimum and maximum for y. So to capture all these important points I want to change the minimum. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to start at 0 but maybe I could start at like negative 5 like a little bit to the left of 0, and go up to uh, 15 or maybe 20 to capture everything and go a little bit beyond um, 12, a little to the right of 12. And since I made the window a little bit wider, maybe I'll count by 2's by changing the x scale a little bit rather than counting by 1's. For the y minimum, let's maybe go down to negative 900, a little bit below the local minimum and up to positive 100. And here it's definitely important, I don't want to crowd the y-axis with lots of little tick marks, so I'm going to change the y-scale to maybe count by 100 instead of by 1. And now when I hit the graph, I can see the entire graph. And we can at least see you know, those minimum and maximum points, those extreme points, and also the inflection point in the middle. Because that y-intercept is pretty close to the x-axis, you know, with this scale at least. Um, another option to, to kind of see that graph even more, if I go to Format, I can turn off the axes. And then just see the graph of the function. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.